it doesn't matter what we do in the front end, if your rear end isn't working, you're just not gonna be fast. Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is Wrench Every Day. And in front of me is our Lexus SC300 drag race project car that I am really excited to get back to wrenching on. We've had a long stretch where we've kind of been stuck out of the shop. Lots of travel and obligations that have kept us from making this thing absolutely amazing. But we are here ready to do some more work on it. Now, if you're not familiar with the origin story of this car, this was Chris from BS for Builds car during a Tavares BS for Build shootout. Freddie had the Freedom Civic that PFI Speed now has, and Chris had this chariot and it was terrible. And we have pretty much removed almost all the terrible out and have prepared it for the good to go into it. All of this is possible because of eBay Motors. Now, if you're not familiar with eBay Motors, I'm quite surprised. It is a fantastic resource to buy or sell just about anything you need for your car. With plenty of predefined search parameters and the custom user search bar, you can find what you need quickly and easily. And with all the buyer protections and seller protections in place, it is a great resource to again, buy or sell your parts. And I've got stuff listed on there currently right now because it's just, it's that easy. Take a couple pictures, answer some questions, and it is out there for people to find and buy. And it's great working with eBay Motors because they're car enthusiasts and get the crazy builds like this. Click the link in the description box below to head on over to eBay Motors and find what you're looking for. Now for just a little bit more detailed history of this car. It had a small block Chevy powering it instead of the original 2JZ with a Chevy automatic transmission behind it which is just a formula for success, just not in this car. It, it worked terribly, it wasn't set up right, didn't run right, and the car was incredibly slow. Now, in the rear end of this car, you would normally have an independent suspension. You would have a fixed mount differential going to half shafts, and you'd have two different wheels that can move as they please. Really great for handling, not the best on drag racing. So they swapped in a Ford 8.8 inch rear end from a Ford Explorer, and a four link not set up the best with the worst possible shocks. And it doesn't matter what we do in the front end. If your rear end isn't working, you're just not gonna be fast. So we're gonna go ahead and pick up the car and I'm gonna show you my rear end and explain why it's illegal. It really is. If we showed up to any NHRA track, they wouldn't let us race. There's a fatal flaw in the Ford 88 rear end that's gonna keep you from racing. So we're gonna go through that, explain why the rear end is so bad and uh, actually get set up for uh, upgrades and improvement. And then if we can work quick enough, we might actually introduce the new engine into this chassis, which I'm really excited to see because the PFI speed guys have, they started off slow, but man, they're, uh, they're far, far ahead of me in progress. Let's go ahead and head underneath and show you some of the things that really make this unique compared to most other Lexus SC300s. And mainly, it's our Ford 8.8 inch rear end back here. And I know this looks really cool, like it's a serious contender meant to drag race and do things amazingly well, and it almost is. We've got the real nice four link setup, and what that does is as power is applied and the car is squatting, lifting, it keeps your pinion angle, this is your pinion here, pointed and true to your transmission, keeps the axle from rotating, and, ow. Ow, eh, that one was a smart one. That one might bleed. Whew. But really the biggest problem with how they set this entire rear end up is they used the shock mounts that came with their aftermarket four link kit. Now this kit is not a super fancy one. It's a simple slip over and weld on, which is not a problem if they had enough heat when they welded it in. That's a very cold weld and will potentially require a fair bit of attention to get right. They did at least link it to the bottom of the differential housing, which is gonna give that a little bit more strength. But these shocks here, on a drag racing car, you need to have a lot of travel in your rear end. It's gonna pick up and stand, especially as your power goes up, it's gonna stand up and you want generally at least eight inches of shock travel. 
Now this is fully unloaded on the shock limiters, which is not a super common thing to have in the rear, but you can. Um, that, that's not eight inches of travel. That's, uh, that's about four inches, period. So we only have two inches of travel in or out, which is terrible for a hard launch. That is the wrong thing to do. So one of the big things we're gonna need to do is get new shocks, move them actually inboard where I can either mount them off here or maybe I'll drop a mount from here to here to hold the shock. And we'll actually go up and cut a hole in our floor so we can get the right length shock back here. One really good thing we do have for it is this differential cover. On a Ford 88, the way the center section is held inside here, you can have the bearing caps actually split. So these are preloads. You actually tighten those in and they push against the caps and they get to hold them in place. So we've talked about everything that's on the inside long enough. Let me go ahead and get this cover pulled off and we're gonna show you why this rear end is completely illegal and we can't uh, go racing with it. That's what it smells like. Just in your head, whatever, whatever would make you go, that's the, the Ford rear limited slip additive, the worst smelling contributor to gear oil, which I'm already not a fan of. And I'm pretty sure they put like five in there. Like that, that is so foul smelling and uh, not the appropriate rear end for drag racing. This is the Ford Explorer True Track. It is technically a limited slip. You can see these clutches in here, and those apply pressure to slow down your uh, spider gears from differentiating left to right and try to make it act like a locker. But when you put in too much of the smelly fish Ford lube and it's worn out, it doesn't do that. So this actually would kind of tend to one wheel peel, but I'm gonna show you what makes this completely illegal. I'm gonna push in gently on this axle shaft and you see just by that orange, that is your axle retaining clip. That is your C-clip right here. And if you were to break your axle, which happens a lot in drag racing, especially if you have really sticky tires, this is what holds the axle in. So if you break it here, here, you know, around here, out here, Nothing holds this in and it will shoot out. Now, some people claim, oh, if you've got disc brakes, you're good to go. Don't worry about that. Those are the bolts that hold your caliper on. If you're driving hard enough and that weight breaks loose, that is coming with it. That's going to break. So in a wise move, the NHRA has made the 88 without C-clip eliminators completely illegal. Now, there is, again, what I just said, C-clip eliminator. What that is, is it's something that comes on, kind of replaces some things in here, and acts as an outside retainer. Two problems with them. One, they tend to leak gear oil, and two, I'm not aware of a single one for a factory disc brake rear end, meaning that's not an option for us. So what do you do? If you want to keep an 8.8, you can actually cut off and weld forward nine inch rear ends and get custom made axles. I have those and I have all the jigs to do that and that might be what we do. But I was going that direction when I thought we had a spool in there. Since it's a limited slip and I now have to buy a spool, we're getting close to potentially just buying a nine inch, but then I have to weld in brackets and everything. So we've got a lot already here. So regardless, we are gonna finish taking this rear end out and we're gonna cut it off hard and I'm gonna show you if you wanted to do nine inch bearing ends and how to measure for custom axles in your Ford, rear end, Lexus, 
Dumehiki. Now the good thing is those measurement processes, this whole jigging things up, it is the same no matter what your vehicle is. So this will apply to you if uh, you wanted to do this. So uh, we'll get back to work. I will try to get the smelly stinky out soon because it, it really is awful. It just horrendous, horrendous, almost as bad as Earl there. If you look, there's no more ends on it. We have cut off our factory style ends here. You can see that's where the bearing used to live and there was no way to retain, retain that axle if it broke. Again, see clips in the middle, they work well, they're cheap, efficient, but if any failure happens, it is very bad. One other thing we discovered is we went ahead and counted and figured out what our gear ratio was. This is a pinion gear that is our ring gear. We counted the total number of teeth and determined we have like a 420 gear ratio, which is perfect for an eighth mile car, not for a quarter mile car. Uh, calculating our hopeful speed, uh, we would have to be running, come on light, you can do it. We'd have to be running somewhere in the neighborhood of 12,000 to 13,000 RPM for a quarter mile pass. I don't know any LS that can actually do that. Um, so instead of floating valve springs, when we order up our axles and new spool, we're gonna go ahead and order a new gear ratio. We're probably actually gonna go all the way down to a 308 gear ratio. Now what that smaller number means is generally there's less torque multiplication through the rear end. You're able to go at a higher speed at the potential cost of acceleration. And the way we're gonna make up that acceleration is horsepower. I mean, because there we go, I can figure out moving. That thing is gonna be able to make a whole lot of horsepower. Now, the whole reason we're cutting these ends off is to install these nine inch ends. And the reason we run this is one, because we have Ford Explorer disc brakes, we're going to be able to bolt those Explorer brakes right up to this rear end. This also is set up with a pressed on bearing with bearing retainer plate that if we have an actual failure inside there, it doesn't go anywhere. So a couple things that we did is we cut off and I made kind of an alignment mark so we could line this up to the same position and then we'll use an angle finder from this side to that side to make sure our bolt patterns are the same. Now, if you are ever going to shorten an axle, widen an axle, change your bearing ends, your cut, you want it to be clean, but it does not have to be perfect because of the special tool that we are going to use. So you notice this plate that it goes into has a very precise center hole. And what you end up doing is inside that box there is a long rod that is going to run all the way through. And we've already got one of our inner alignment tools in place. You bolt this in place of 
your rear differential and it's going to run a rod that is going to true both ends and bearings into a perfect straight line, which is what you need to do. So if you have a little bit of waver in your cut, your taper isn't absolutely perfect, when you use this proper tool, it's going to align everything up perfect. So our next step is we're going to go ahead and prep our ends, get the rods shoved through there, and uh, bring the welder over, and then I've got to order a bunch of parts. So I'm going to hurry up and get this thing welded so we can get ready to uh, mount the new heart into the Lexus. And now our Ford 8.8 inch rear end has nine inch bearing big style Torino ends on it. So we are going to be able to order custom axles that are going to have proper bearing retainers and we can race Brent and the PFI speed guys legally, but we need to measure for those axles so we're able to order it. Now, if you go, most every order form sheet has all of the same measurements of what they're going to want. Um, some of that you don't actually necessarily have to measure as long as you know, you know, what you're using. So we know our bearing ends, so we're not going to need to measure the bearing diameters and things of that nature. We know our brake setup, and that is a formula that you can pull up and say, okay, with these brakes, we need our axles to be this long. But the thing that you absolutely need is your bearing flange to differential the pinion center line. So this is a really cool tool that comes with part of our sh shortening kit with all the different holes that lines this hole up. If we look right through there, straight in, there's our pinion center line. Now, if you do not have this tool, which if you're at this point and you've shortened your own ends, you probably have it. If you don't, you can measure across your pinion and draw your center line and then basically run a square or something forward so you can then run your tape measure to that. So with this marker here, we can take a tape measure. We will stretch her on through. Stretch it through. You know, let's do the two-handed job, one-handed. <sighs> so if we look, we have a measurement of 28 and 7 eighths for one axle and then you repeat the same measurement to your pinion center line, and then you can contact your axle company. Now they may ask you to take a couple other measurements, but because we're gonna go with a strange rear end with 35 spline axles and a strange spool, it's fairly easy-ish. I'll be able to call them up with those numbers. I'll be able to tell them, okay, we have your bearing caps and give them that part number. Tell them we're using stock Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 disc brakes and we'll give them what we want for our bolt pattern and what wheel studs we want. And then they're going to be able to whip up those axles for us. Also, when you're ordering axles, you have the option to pay a little bit extra for them to pre-install the retainers and bearings and seals and everything for you. It is worth every penny of it, and they really don't charge you that much more versus you buying your own bearings, because if you buy your own bearings, you need to also measure them, give them those tolerances to make sure it's perfect. We are now on pause with our rear end. 
which means we're gonna turn so you can see me. We're gonna lower the car down and we're gonna start getting, we're gonna get this bolted in. That's how we're gonna end the episode. This sitting on its motor plates in there. you what we've been doing in all of those time lapses and GoPro footage. We have gotten our motor plate, the, the mid plate, ready to go and we've tapped our engine block. So if you are ever going to motor plate a LS family engine that is not an actual LS like this LQ4, LQ9, they do not have all of these front bolt holes that you normally would find on an LS. So there's a company, ICT Billet. They actually sell a bracket that will bolt in into the AC compressor side that gives us our firm mounting here. And then you can do what I did here, which is drill and tap and put a bolt in here. So we've got that done. I've gone through and clearanced our plate back a little bit so it can sit flush against the cylinder head. And we have got our new thicker mid plate put in. I used my implement paint that I forgot, it takes 50 years to dry. And uh, so we've got some fingerprints in there. And one thing I ended up doing is I matched it perfectly off our old mid plate, which was bent because it was too thin. And I'm guessing that limiter bar went in too late, but I didn't like how they had the engine sitting. They actually offset it driver's side, which is kind of the opposite of what you want to do because your butt is there. So a really cool trick you can do is you can move the engine ever so slightly. So I actually have our center line, you know, my fancy plumb bob because I couldn't find my nice one. I've got some electrical wire with a, a socket hanging. I offset the engine just over a quarter inch passenger side. It gives me a little bit better tunnel clearance. I'm probably still going to need to hammer a little bit, but I went ahead and moved because that's going to move our engine weight slightly passenger. It's going to move our transmission weight slightly passenger. And then I can also potentially put the turbo slightly passenger to ballast the driver. Not saying the driver's a heavy guy, but he's also not a featherweight. So to uh, kind of counteract that, you can choose where you put your weight in the car. So we're just going to take the whole engine a little bit towards passenger. Because, is that hair? Or, no, no, nice grease spot. So next thing we are going to do is we're going to go ahead and lower the car. Ugh, trip into our engine a little bit, but we're going to hang it and uh, try to introduce that because I think for me, that's a huge win to have the engine home. And I think for you guys, that's a big win too, where you can kind of have some of that same excitement because we're waiting on parts for our rear end to make it legal and safe. So uh, let's get the, the engine in the hole because then, then that gives us a whole lot more exciting things to start working on.
Well, our engine is still hanging and I don't have the front motor plate on. I did learn if you're having lower facing headers, those frame mounted uh, engine mount plate, motor plates, I'm tired. I've been dragging myself in and out from under the car, kind of lifting the engine on my back. And then I just lifted a whole engine block. And I'm going to show you why here in just a minute. But we have it living in between the frame rails. And one benefit of our new motor plate is we'll actually have it set up to where it sits on these frame rails. That's a much better way than just, you know, kind of how we did on Earl and how this used to be where it ties in on the side of the frame. But if you notice, there's no mid plate under there, which you really can't see at all because it's incredibly dark. Let's go outside and I'm going to show you where that mid plate is right now. And I'm kind of, kind of bummed because I'm not going to have the engine in today for this week's episode, which is kind of a bummer. I really really wanted to but here on uh johnny's old blown up engine i am test fitting my motor plate and bolt line up the bolt lines up bolt lines up bolt lines up and then nothing else does somehow and i've tried pulling and straightening it a little bit it ju it's acting like it's just not cut right which is kind of a huge bummer because um I measured and drilled and modified parts of the car for that mid plate. So, didn't quite end this episode with all the progress I was hoping for, but much needed progress. We are getting closer to having a legal rear end. And I mean, look, look, there, there is an engine in the hole and it actually fits pretty well. And I don't know, it's pretty close to borderline technically mid engine. I know how much you guys love that argument of uh, what is and isn't mid-engine. I'm incredibly excited. Brent and the PFI Speed guys have a whole lot of car coming for them in the Freedom Civic. Um, it's That's just going to be a whole lot of fun no matter what because uh, we're both building some pretty insane cars. Um, but yeah, sometimes you don't get done what you wanted to get done and it's all right. We've learned it with Earl. You still can have fun. I'm going to jump online and overnight a new mid plate. So we can get that going again and get back on track there. But uh, as always, appreciate you hanging out in the shop as we make lots of questionable choices, which you guys should always do. Always make questionable choices. And uh, if your mid plate doesn't fit, just order a new one. That, it's kind of an important part of your chassis. <laughs> oh well. Wait, guys, stop, stop the outro. Hold everything. We don't have a problem. I kind of got back to thinking why would that mid plate not fit the other one worked perfectly on earl and i remembered that obnoxious paint that never dries while i had it hanging up it fell off and uh, it was just it was bent a little bit so uh i bolted it down trued it back up got everything good bolted it into the car nice and square and then we got carried away and uh ha <laughs> ha there that that is how we wanted to end the episode i still need to go ahead and weld in some mounts to bolt that into but i was able to achieve my goal of it basically sitting down on the frame rails and uh oh man we have an engine living in its hole with just a little bit of fabrication left to go to have it permanently in there and it just looks glorious apparently i have a problem with keeping engines under you know, uh, uh, hoods, hoods are optional. Cletus has taught us you don't need a hood. So we've got her tucked in just as far back as we can possibly go, which again, gives us plenty of room for the turbo and everything to live, you know, the turbo probably here and then a nice snorkel boom right into there. And <sighs> now we're shooting the outro the way we wanted to with an engine where it belongs in Lazarus with huge progress going. And uh, we're just back to ordering all of our axles and spool parts for our Ford 88. So next time we are going to probably start giving the turbo its home. That'd be a good thing. So uh, appreciate you as always hanging out in the shop. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices. And uh, if something doesn't fit, make sure you didn't drop it and bend it because you, you might have. You, you don't need to buy a new thing. Just, you know, fix what you bent. We'll see ya.